This is a world pandemic. It's a one in 100 year event. So you can expect that we will have transmission uh, from time to time, and that's just the way it is. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. I heard, I heard the leader of the opposition, the temporary leader of the opposition, actually being a complete pork chop out there today. Quite stupid. So you've got to say, oh, the cakes weren't quite right, or this wasn't quite right. Please quite stupid. Seat for the moment. We should all wait with bated breath for you to leave and somebody else Mrs. to come along. The other area of uh, danger uh, is the place that we would normally consider to be the safest place on earth, our homes. Uh, you've already heard today that uh, one of, uh, or a number of the people who've actually uh, uh, now got the virus, got it in a home situation. And we'll hear more detail about that in due course. But it is uh, both a safe place and a dangerous place. We must treat this uh, new world order, new, this new world of COVID, we must treat this new world of COVID, even in our own homes, with a high level of care and caution. The question is, do we or don't we have enough face masks? You certainly need one. Just be quiet, seriously. Oh, for heaven's sakes. You, you wouldn't fit into it. Anyway, no, it'd be nice to take. When I was a teacher many years ago, there were a couple of kids in the class like you, and normally they went down to six pretty quickly because that's when you should be on carrying on, on like point that. Of order. That's just stupid. If I was sitting next to someone like you in a bus, I would definitely have a mask on. I have heard reports of, uh, at some weddings, uh, people have uh, chosen to ignore the limit of 20 people dancing. Uh, the bridal party and the whoever are acknowledged as being in the in the bridal party uh, an expectation that they can all get up there and dance unfortunately dancing singing is amongst the most dangerous things you can do with this rather evil virus but if you actually choose to ignore the rules and you put your fellows uh, fellow visitors fellow, fellow attendees at the wedding at risk that is just completely and woefully inappropriate. You are as irrelevant as you will ever be. I, I will. Seriously, you are clearly irrelevant. Very frustrating and very annoying. Now, what we are finding is that uh, some of the visitors to uh, various venues still think that it's funny to be caught putting in there that you're Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse or a false phone number. That must stop. This is a worldwide COVID pandemic. And thinking it's smart to call yourself Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse is about as stupid as it gets. This is getting a bit ridiculous. You're holding us up here while we should be doing the work that we need to do. While you tell us... You Minister, Minister. The one thing we do know is this, uh, this virus, this, this, this COVID virus is like a guerrilla fighter. It comes out when you least expect it, which is why we need to do all the things that we've been doing for the last 15 months. Uh, QR codes are the weapon that we have to fight back with. Last year we talked about this particular virus when it first came to our shores um, as being obviously dangerous, but it wasn't a long jumper and it wasn't a high jumper. This Delta variant, variant, the Delta variant of the COVID virus is actually a gold medalist when it comes to jumping from one person to another. It is a long jumper. It reminds you that uh, we have volunteered to come here. This, we don't acknowledge that you have the capacity to have us here. We, we've come here to try and assist and we're going to give you the information you need. So, uh, thank you, Minister. Actually, I think the context is the first, useful. The first speaker said this wasn't in some sort of gotcha Minister. moment. And all Minister. you're trying to do is carry Minister. on like Last Saturday, I indicated that uh, what we knew about this Delta virus um, and the transmission at uh, Westfield at Bondi Junction could be described as a near and present danger. What I would say to our community is we've gone from that near and present danger to a very real and present danger. I know uh, just this morning, uh, talking with our Chief Health Officer and her advisors, uh, I was informed that at least one scientific paper says that this particular variant is almost a thousand times more infectious. The, the committee has endeavoured to ensure this is a, 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 an, even, an even tempered exchange of information. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? It just seems to me that- <laughs> Excuse me, Minister, can I just stop you there? Um, Minister, we're not trying to catch you out. There's no trick here. We're specifically asking very um, important advice from pub the public health officials and from Dr Chant. I just, I'm trying to help. I'd just, I'd, I'd rather, just spend, I'd rather, I'd, I'd just spend more just, time than it would have taken me to explain it, Penny. I'll go back to what I was saying. On the well, no, June. Minister, I, I, I really, I have questions for Dr Chant that I'd like to get through. Um, and I would really like it if you would allow her to answer those, please. Well, um, 
I'll answer that. Um, you might and remember the question that was I'm... put to Dr. Chant, and if you would allow Dr. Chant I to will answer. answer. No, actually, I will answer the question that I'm now talking about. Thank you. I mean, not, you're, not up to you to determine who's going to answer the questions. I'm the minister, and I'll answer it. It's almost a sense now of the Hunger Games um, of people chasing vaccine, um, and uh, until we get enough vaccine and enough GPs actually at the front line able to uh, provide that vaccine into arms, we will continue to have effectively the Hunger Games going on here in New South Wales. Um, as a colleague who is normally very careful in your words, can I say that you're putting words into Dr Chan's mouth and that's not at all fair. Done Minister, done we're Minister we're, our time's about to expire. Can I just ask one uh, I'm question? sorry. Either I get to finish the answers or I'm not going to bother. Seriously. I, well, I'm James. Minister Hazard, how damaging is it for the public's perception of the state government's vaccine rollout that New South Wales Health, your department, accidentally vaccinated about 160 Joey's boys? And how embarrassed are you? Well, what I find more embarrassing, James, is that you would make that sort of question accusation against frontline health staff who work their butts off and who tomorrow will have achieved a million, dollar, a million vaccinations into arms. You know what? The school intended it well, there was a mistake, and so what? It's happened. Out of a million vaccinations, move on. I'm sorry, if you haven't been listening, that is not our issue. I'd just like to ask one question to Dr Chand before our time expires. Well, finish the answer to my question. And Your question and is out of order and wrong. So, again. So could I perhaps clarify? And a waste of time. Minister, I'm just going to ask one question to Dr Chand. Well, I'm telling you. We take well, no, Minister, you, you cut me off midway through what I was asking. I want to stress that uh, to the mums and dads, your children will be well looked after inside when they arrive. They'll be literally ushered. We'll have uh, nurses, we'll have uh, some of the youth command, we'll have uh, some of the young, young police from the, uh, uh, the various uh, operations within police there just to guide them through um, as to where they go. They'll be looked after every moment inside the, uh, the stadium and uh, they'll be well cared for. So mums and dads feel secure. We've got about 24,000 students we're aiming to get through next week. Uh, the messages will come out this week and the opportunity is there, but really you've got to take it, grasp it with both hands. Um, I know uh, if you talk to any of our Olympians, I'll tell you, you've just got to grasp opportunity and this is an opportunity, so don't waste it. So my question... I don't know what the, the issue is here. It's just, if it's a beat up on the government, well, OK, we're here, but beat it up somewhere else, will you? Because Dr Chan's really busy and I'm really busy. If you want to actually discuss the issues properly, we're here to do it. We came voluntarily. We didn't have to be here. Please just ask the questions. We'll give you the answers. When you're in a war, you don't win it with wacko views. And unfortunately, we're seeing that with some people who think that it's OK not to wear masks. My strong message to the community is we will only win this war against the virus if people wear masks and follow all of the other instructions that we understand will keep us safe. We owe this to ourselves. We owe this to the community more broadly. We owe this to our families. Wear a mask and don't get caught up in the wacko views that some are expressing. It was agreed that we would do it one hour. You've now had an hour and 15 minutes and we have to repair for other matters this afternoon. Well, so Minister, again, I, the, the invitation was for an hour and a half. And, and, and Dr Chan, I think there are a number I of questions. I accepted for an hour. I accepted for an hour. Thank you. And again, I'd invite Dr Chant and the Minister to spend the next 17 minutes answering questions rather than having a procedural debate. Um, David, I appreciate Minister, it. Minister, I do appreciate it. I know yeah. it's hard. I know you're tired. I all understand. You've had an hour and Another a quarter. That's it. I was told this was an inquiry, but now I'm seeing it's more than that. There are a lot of people who uh, don't base their decisions in science um, or evidence. And all I'll say is... Uh, we're in a one in, one, one in 100 year pandemic. The community more broadly need to understand the decisions are taken as best as possible on the basis of evidence and science to keep us safe. Um, more broadly, I'd say to those, we had a question from the lady, the journalist here before about some people not, uh, not wanting to take vaccines. Well, my message to them is uh, you being extremely selfish uh, if you think you can not have a vaccine just because you don't want to have a vaccine, well, you should think about what you're doing to your family and to the community. And I would say even more than that, what a hide you have, what, what a ridiculous position is that when you're going to put health staff at risk and when you get sick, you're going to expect to come into hospital and get paid for by taxpayers. 
you know what? It's time for, for those who actually think that way to wake up, Minister, including, please, including, please, including, please, including commentators who actually don't base their, uh, their commentary in any logic whatsoever. And I just remind the committee that Dr Chan has a lot of work to do this afternoon and we voluntarily came here for one hour, now one hour and ten minutes. So if we could finish after this question, I'd be very grateful so we can get on with doing the work that we do. So, um, just to let you know, we... Um, no, 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 just let me just... I'll keep it short, but what you're missing is that Dr Chant gives a range of advice, and that's what Dr Chant has just explained, and I had to put it in the context, and you need the context. But I am aware of some reports that uh, some people think it's a joke um, to... Well, perhaps even worse than that, perhaps it's malicious, um, to put in false reports um, to health and to service New South Wales about uh, somebody being positive. Um, I'd heard those reports. I can now speak from personal experience. Um, I received notification uh, yesterday and again today from Service New South Wales and from Health that apparently somebody has put my name in there as being a positive rapid antigen test. Can I just say, first of all, it's extremely irresponsible. You're undermining what what the public health team is trying to do here to keep the entire community safe. Um, it is juvenile, it is moronic, but it's also just so disappointing to think that you would actually undermine an incredibly hard-working public health team here in New South Wales trying to keep us safe. We are all probably going to get this virus at some point in the next year or two. Those viruses are going to be around for a long while. so. Please don't uh, stand on your dig. If you've told your mates that oh, I'm not going to have it because of whatever, well, now's the time to actually say, actually, you know what, I'm thinking about it. It's a new year. I'm going to change my ways. Um, can I just remind you, Minister, Mr. Minister, Chair, could, I, Minister could I invite you, could I invi Minister, could I invite you, please, could I invite you, please, if you insist upon continuing to answer, could you please complete your answer within 30 seconds and then we will go to Dr Chant. I do know that other members... I think um, that was just a political statement by you, Mr Shoebridge, so thank you for that Minister, political statement. I do know that other members... That's exactly have what you've been doing, questions. and that's the end of today's hearing. Thank you very well, much. Well, Minister... Well, that's disappointing, Minister. Just just go away somewhere and stop spreading, sp stop spreading lies and mistruths. What you're doing is you're scaring people unnecessarily. Um, live in your own world. I, know, I mean, unfortunately, social media allows people to gather together and they think that they're actually the majority. They're not but they can actually send messages which are absolutely wrong, spurious, misleading, and actually, quite, quite simply, could, could cause someone's death. So, give a damn about someone else uh, other than yourself. The UN has called travel restrictions apathy. Should the travel ban mean... Apathy? Apathy. Can I read it? -E -E Last question. Apartheid. Apartheid. Like Can you read the question again to me? Sorry. Apartheid, yeah. Okay. Apartheid. That means, anyway, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> defaced your property. Somebody actually did uh, deface the front lawn with the word tyrant right across it. And uh, that was, yeah, it's pretty bad. Very close to everything, really.